It's a great pleasure to be here again, as I have no conflict of interest. And uh, I, I talked in the last uh, report meeting, uh, report meeting about uh, metal metal prosthesis. So I make this available on the YouTube, so you understand this complex, this complex uh, subject. Uh, we, we have metals in our body of our blood. Uh, chromium, molybdenum, cobalt, they are normal in our blood, but titanium is not normal in our blood, but they come from implant, and titanium is also used to, to do the, the, the uh, bone in growth. So, iatrogenic exposures to metals, ions, is caused by implanting metal devices in the human body, even from brackets, from dentistry, valves, stents, so, and also in many orthopedic devices such as plates, pins, screws, and even wear uh, of metal articulating components by corrosion, by wear process, the third body. So this, this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, modular neck, so we need to prevent modularity many times. And other, other sources of metal debris are from failing or unstable incongruent implants. They will lead to higher uh, where in metal debris too. So, I'll say quickly about the metal metal prosthesis. They started around 1950 with McKee, then 1960 with Peter Ring, and then in the 1988, it became very popular to solve the problems of the, the polyethylene particles uh, that we were giving osteolysis. So, this is a metal suit prosthesis. And then in 1991, McKee, uh, McKee Ming from England and Harlan Amstutz. From, from the United States, they, they devised the resurfacing, the total resurfacing. Before that, Harlan still had only partial resurfacing and many others. So, uh, and this process, the resurfacing were giving very good results, but they are difficult to, be, to do. And in 2006, Jimmy Connors, a great tennis champion, was the propaganda guy, and he was implanted with a big head, and the industry invented the big head, which is much easier to to do then the resurfacing. And so we must find that the purpose of this lecture is that it, there are 900,000 patients with metal, metal, big heads in the world. So after two, three years, all these prosthesis start, not all, but many of these prosthesis start giving uh, problems. And if you put in the internet, if you put in the Google, metal, metal, heat prosthesis recall, you will find several articles, maybe from or for lawyers too, because they call the patients to, to, to go against the companies. Many companies, DPE, Biomed, and you have problems with many companies with these big heads and also other types of implants. So, they, this, this, this plant, for example, the Zimmer Duron, they had a problem with the acetabulum. The acetabulum was loose. Né? The same thing with the Puy. The Puy, the acetabulum was too shallow and also uh, could, didn't have good in bony growth. So, it was, there was a, a metallosis caused by the no, no contact of the acetabulum. And uh, so, this, this is a, a, a case that I will show later about a metal loss that I have that the, the, the femoral head was loose in the, the, the femoral neck and stayed 17 years and a half. The patient was painless and it produced so another, another type of metal loss caused by a loose implant, but not back between the interface of the, the resurface and the metal back. So, you, you have these big heads, no? the big heads now in Portugal, you, you call this monopolar, and then you have resurfacing. And also Dr. Bino Ferreira also said the dual mobility uh, be careful with this dual mobility. Reserve them for revision surgeons, as uh, Dr. Lefterius also showed in a, in, a, in a difficult case, so case that you have great, great risk of dislocation if, if you cannot put implants in the uh, pro, uh, traditional dual mobility, as Dr. William Ferreira showed, then you can use this. But try to, to not use uh, metal liners, metal liners or metal liners. Okay, and there's also ceramic metal. And 
with a metal uh, liner back, metal liner back. So all these prostheses they can generate metal ions. So so you can put them together in metal metal prostheses. So how how is how how do you find out the bearing surfaces in these prostheses just by the X-ray? And there are many models as I can show you. I'm showing some some models. And so how how do you do? Yeah. Uh, this, so, but basically, we have three types of metal metal prosthesis. The big head, as I said, the metasu, and also uh, the metasu, these modern ones with the metal back yeah, that, that we have, and, and the resurfacing. So, how, how can you do And also, there is any resurfacing. I, I even uh, wrote a chapter of a book from Dr. Ruf Therese in his book. Uh, partial resurfacing is something out of fashion, but it works sometimes. Right? It's not not so so good, but that's a bilateral total heat resurfacing. So it's important to know the next size. The next size, and how can you know the next size? And also another generator of metal ions is the, the valgus acetabulum. Valgus acetabulum generates acetabulum. So that is this is called trunionosis. Trunion is this area of the prosthesis where the where the femoral head. Uh, goes inside, so it, 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 this can generate high level of metal ions. So it's important to know the, the, the length of the neck. If it's a short neck, then it's not so bad. Right? But if it's a medium neck, it requires some more attention. And if it's, a, if it's a long neck, these are the most dangerous uh, big head prosthesis of monopolar, as you say in Portugal, that generates the, the metal losses. The, the problems also because, because they have big uh, uh, torque in the trillion. So this prosthesis was a problem of engineering, and we searched. We started implanting that in 2006. Became a big fashion. Now these patients may go to your office and what do you do? Yeah. So it's important to, as I said, so you can, if the acetabulum, if the acetabulum is, is valgus too, take care. You can have metalos by edge loading. So this, just an example. This would be a long neck. This will be a medium neck, and this will be a short neck. So these prostheses are not so bad, but the, the medium neck and the long neck are, is a problem. Yeah? So the only way for you to know which prosthesis the patient has is with the labels. So don't throw the labels in the trash. Give them to the patient. Keep a copy for yourself. It's very important. In Brazil, it's not. Uh, most of the doctors, they, they don't give the labels to the patient. It's a pity, because there are more than 2,000 types, about thousands of models of prosthesis. Nowadays. And and one thing that happened uh, with this metal metal, you say metal metal, no, metal metal, you are not going to do metal metal. Because they, they transform, you know, these are two monkeys. We have two monkeys here. We have a gorilla and we have a small a small monkey. They transform the resurfacing in a gorilla. <laughs> Gorillas, they 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 have continuously this in metal metal proceeds. <laughs> And, and then the, the resurfacing, we know the resurfacing. After the running phase, that in Portugal we say amaciamento, after the phase of the running phase, if the resurfacing is okay, you won't have metal prosthesis. Kuntzman proved that uh, a well done resurfacing uh, will last, you know, can last a lifetime. Uh, and, and this uh, also another thing that uh, I presented this large maneuver in London in 2018 at the Easter meeting. It's a meeting that you should go to prevent the scratching of the thermal head. You can do with the ceramic or ceramic. You just use you know the, the stitches, and then then you prevent it goes like a shoe, a shoe. So you prevent the, the, the scratching of the head. Another thing that is very important in all my surgeries, I use radioscopy to, to know the, the angles. The, the angulation of the of the acetabulum. So, if the prosthesis, as I said, is in good position, there's a great possibility of full life expectancy for hip resurfacing. There's a paper published by Julian Girard from France doing resurfacing and uh, treats 48 patients that do Iron Man treats with a uh, long follow up already. It's about 10 years. The patients are doing very well. Manuel Ribas has a great experience. Me too with the with the patients that do sportsmen. And they like less well. So what? But you have to pay attention with the metal wires, metal metal prosthesis, or any kind of implant. As I said, if the patient has any of the symptoms, okay, uh, and look, look at this, uh, any of the symptoms, and even hypothyroid. So look at patients with hypothyroid. So this this patient with metal metal implants have a higher risk of revision. Large head, small head resurfacing too. Okay, increased risk of failure. 
low positioning is very important for you to see in the x-ray because they click and release all these debris. And we have all this terminology, AVAL, adverse local tissue reaction, adverse reaction to metal debris, but, metal debris, but they are almost the same thing, you know, reactions of the body for metal ions. So, and these are purposes of that temporal. There's many papers published on this, with uh, metal, metal prosthesis, but the, most of this paper about the big heads, the monopolar head, all these terms, so the tumor, lymphocyte, infiltration, and finally, cobaltism. Cobaltism, there's this case that is in the Netflix on the bleeding edge, or in Portuguese, Operação Enganosa, Netflix shows this case about an orthopedic surgeon from Alaska, that he had cobaltism, he had a, a, a very big disturbance of his behavior after doing a, a big head, the ASR. So, so this case, they say, oh, metal matter is not good. You can see the red uh, bleeding, the bleeding edge. The bleeding edge, but bleeding edges. So, take care with this, these abnormalities. And, and so, we, we, it's important for us to, to measure metal ions. Whenever you see an implant that is not okay, measure the metal ions. They can, usually, we do the whole blood. But the measure, me measurement of the metal ions, ask the patient, how many, how many samples did you take? Because the first sample, must be at uh, this uh, disposal since it comes from contamination of the syringe, the, the needle. Right? And the second, uh, so the second sample is the one the uh, just two, two ml of blood, total blood, is enough. Another thing is, a uh, patient cannot drink beer in the last three days, or even vitamin B. Vitamin B, cyanocobalamina, can also, can also uh, interfere with the results. Huh? And, and also, uh, uh, the, the chromium, sometimes it, 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 it modifies with the glucose metabolism, so we rely more on cobalt. cobalt. So, when you have bilateral hip resurfacing arthroplasty, it's acceptable to have a little bit more of cobalt and chromium, but these are not toxic levels, okay? But unilateral, you, 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 we, we, we accept these levels. These are the levels that we accept for, for unilateral and bilateral. And there's an overflow chart that is a little bit complicated for me to go this for, for lack of time. But whenever you see uh, alterations in the chromium and cobalt, go through this flow chart that is published by Katharine Van Straten. She received the prize. And then, then you see uh, if it's, uh, it's elevated, asymptomatic, then you do puncture, or you, do, you, you can do the puncture, you can do uh, a CT, you can do an MRI uh, to analyze. And also we have here Belotti, Manuel Rivas, Carlos Magni, Cárdenas, uh, they are author of this, this very, very nice paper published in, uh, in 2013 that has a very nice flow chart with green, Yellow and red, red, pay attention. So I suggest you see, uh, for example, this is the case of a revision with a big head that has a silver tumor. Uh, and the, and the, 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 in this case, the, the femoral stem and also the acetabulum both were loose. So they, there was not, I don't think it was a problem of the big head, or maybe the big head loosened the acetabulum or, or the femoral stem. I don't know, I don't know if it was probably, did you did this case, Mono? No, 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 too many cases. And, we, and there's a report published at the HIP International that uh, uh, Oliver Marie, uh, Manuel Hibas, me, and uh, this is Kundes Matt, and uh, Katerina van der Straten, uh, this is Edwin Su. Uh, I'm in this group, uh, there's three guys from, three doctors from Portugal too. We published, uh, we followed 11,382 patients with HIP surfacing with less than 50 years, and we proved that this prosthesis works very well. So we cannot mix, you know, the gorilla with the little little chimpanzee. Uh, with, with the little. And in Brazil, something very interesting was happening during the pandemic. The laboratories were saying patients with prots metal metal, uh, it's acceptable 20 micrograms per liter. Several laboratories. Then I start from this is crazy. This is crazy. <coughs> if you have a prosthesis metal metal prosthesis. Uh, you cannot change the, the, uh, normal, the normal levels of, uh, but now the, the, the labs, the labs uh, uh, are correcting this, this thing. And this, this lecture, uh, it's also the, uh, available in my YouTube channel. If you put, you just put Symposium Lafayette Lage and Protsi Metal Metal. What do you, you should know about this? Okay, the Venus Abyss from Protsi Metal Metal. This is a great lecture that Ribas did in Brazil in 2019 of 36 minutes.
And uh, so I suggest you all to, to see this lecture. And thank you very much for the opportunity.